Alrighty, hello again everybody. Mentor Fest 2021. We're 20 past the hour, so we'll go ahead and, and continue. My name is Aaron, Kilo 8 Alpha Mike Hotel. I'm the section traffic manager here in North Texas. And thanks for joining us for Mentor Fest today here on, on our YouTube live stream. Next session coming up here, uh, emergency uh, communications. Uh, you know, a lot of times we gotta go to the incident. And so how do you work portably during an emergency and, and work MCOM? And we've got Robert here. Uh, with us to, to tell us more. So Robert, over to you and good afternoon. Uh, thank you, sir. This is Robert. Uh, my amateur call sign is N5REG. And on this screen that's up at the moment, I have my email address if somebody wants to ask questions later or contact me. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about portable communication and portable emergency communication. <clears throat> Basically, I'm going to cover the equipment that I have to where I have the ability to go to the site or to the emergency and set up radio communications. <clears throat> the first thing I want to talk about is why. Why would somebody uh, want to do this sort of thing or be involved in ham radio? <clears throat> uh, one of my favorite things about ham radio is that uh, the public service, to be, a, be of service to the community and be of service to uh, public situations. We have a lot of uh, public events that we participate in each year. Uh, COVID has kind of held that back, but we've got a couple of events coming up, and, and I'm already signed up because I really enjoy uh, participating in it. Uh, I've got a lot, quite a, an investment in ham radio. It's not a cheap hobby. It kind of starts out as a hobby, but it, be, it, it becomes more than just a hobby. I really enjoy uh, ham radio. I've learned a whole lot of stuff. Uh, I've been a ham uh, operator since uh, 2013. Uh, I'm an extra license. So I've got the, all three of the license and uh, and I really enjoy it. <clears throat> so I'm going to be talking about today the mobile setup, the go boxes, communication trailer, public service, uh, and then there will be uh, questions and uh, Q&A <clears throat> later in the presentation. Uh, I'm going to start with my truck. So I've got available radios on hand, additional power available, portable antenna setup, and different modes of communication. <clears throat> so this is inside my truck. I have an F-150 Ford. Uh, and this is right up in the front with me. I, I'm also a welder, so I've been, built an aluminum stand, so I have the radios right there in front of me. The top radio is a digital radio, uh, which can actually go through the internet as well as repeaters. We have repeaters that are local to where I can do uh, fusion. It's called fusion radio. The middle radio is a, a uh, police scanner, a trunked police scanner. So I like to just monitor what's going on around me. However, with the scanners, uh, most of the frequencies are going encrypted. So you can still pick up some of them, but not all of them. You can pick up uh, P25, them, that sort of thing. So eventually, when everything goes encrypted, I guess the scanner will be uh, obsolete. The bottom radio on the picture is a Kenwood 710G, which also has a built-in TNC. So I do not have to have an external TNC because it's built-in. And if you can see right to the right side of that radio is a USB plug. I got the cable rolled up behind that radio, so therefore I can do packet uh, from my truck, a uh, two meter and 70 centimeter packet uh, in my truck, out on site or at any location. And that's pretty handy. All I gotta have is my laptop and I've gotta have the uh, Winlink software. This is in the back supposed to be a seat back there, but nobody's rode back there in quite some time, obviously. Uh, at the very bottom of this rack, and this aluminum rack, is a, an extra battery. So I have another, uh, I can't, I think it's a 25 amp hour battery sitting there, and then the next shelf up are the actual radios. So Ham has done good at making these radios where they've got the head that's separated from the body of the radio, so you can mount the body of the radio under your seat or, or like I've done in a rack and then have the head up front. 
uh, it makes it a whole lot easier in, in mounting the equipment <clears throat> especially with cars today there's no space on the dash to really mount a radio it's all plastic and it's a little bit more difficult on the top of that rack I have a 1500 watt inverter so I can if I need to run 110 from the battery that's at the bottom and of course I have to keep the truck running to uh, run that inverter but that comes in comes in real handy and I know some of the new vehicles today are coming equipped with inverters which is pretty smart if you got a little air compressor or something you need to air up your tower tire then you've got a 110 supply in the vehicle that's pretty smart <clears throat> this is a picture of the back of my truck so I have a fixture I'm a welder by the way I've been doing it about 23 years so I get to make all my own fixtures and brackets etc so this is a fixture under the cover is a thousand watt generator uh, that stays in that truck all the time I keep the fuel changed in it and the oil changed and but this fixture at the moment has a an aluminum uh, military pole in it and also it's made to where I can put a fiberglass pole on the outside of it so I can set up two different antennas Here's a picture of the uh, fi uh, the uh, aluminum military pole. That's approximately 20 feet up in the air. Uh, and that's one of the things that are definitely uh, handy is be the, getting the height of the antenna. Getting that antenna up in the air uh, gives you a lot better uh, transmitting and receiving. So that's a picture of it uh, sitting in the back of my truck. I don't have an antenna on it. I just wanted to take a picture of it to show that it could be set up. This is the other one, and it's a fiberglass push-up pole. <laughs> Basically, you pull up a section, and it locks it, and you pull up the next section, and it locks it, and so on and so forth. This one uh, will extend 22 feet in the air, and then, of course, where the fixture is to the ground is probably another 2 feet. So I can get a UHF, VHF antenna up in the air, and it comes in handy if you're in low areas or... Or there's a lot of blockage around your buildings, etc. So the higher you can get the antenna, the better. And this works out well. And here's a picture of the fiber, uh, the aluminum military pose laying in the truck and the fiberglass one installed on the fixture. So I, I basically designed that fixture before I can do either or. And it's uh, definitely handy for public communications or portable communications also have uh, military poles these can be purchased on eBay uh, these are fiberglass and uh, you buy this piece that makes a tripod and I've got a set of two so I can run a wire antenna from tripod to tripod uh, via NVIS and I can do HF uh, communications portably and uh, that's really handy also and it's a pretty uh, easy to set up and it's pretty compact and to get it all tore down you can put it in that bag that's laying there on the ground and carry it all in one bag so it's real portable uh, works very well At, and this is the top view of that same antenna and also on every one of these antennas all the portable antennas I have I have also a pulley so I use this pulley to where I can pull up a wire antenna if necessary uh, and I use an MCOM2, which is an all-mode uh, wire in-fed antenna that works good in uh, MCOM or emergency communication or just portable uh, communication. So I've got it set up to where I can do it on any antenna. I've got it on the antennas where I can set up the, the wire as well as the dual-band antenna on the very top of it. Here's a picture of one of the wire antennas that I use. It's a chameleon MCOM. It's about 63 feet, I believe. And you can set this up in VIS or you can set it up as a sloper. Uh, there's uh, several different uh, configurations for this uh, wire antenna, and it works very well. It's, a, it's, it's not 200 feet long. You know, it's pretty, uh, pretty uh, portable where you can set it up fairly easy. Uh, you got to have a counterpoise which is another wire for it to reflect off of but it works very well <clears throat> now I'm gonna go into my go boxes so most hams they're into 
uh, public service or emergency communications uh, build themselves go boxes. So I've got a couple of go boxes. And this is the go box that I actually use. This technically is an amplifier box. You see people uh, with electric guitars uh, and so forth have this box with an amplifier in it. And uh, it closes up on the end so you can carry it in wherever uh, you're going to use it. Take the front and the back cover off and you, and you have all the equipment that's exposed. So I've got a 30 amp power supply in this box. I've got an IC7300 uh, with a built-in sound card, which is HF. I've got a power gate, a rig runner, and then also have a TMV71 Kenwood to where I can do UHF, VHF, or I can take the Cantronics 3 Plus TNC and I can do UHF, VHF packet out of this go box. Here's a picture of the front of it. <clears throat> Up on the top left corner, there is a, uh, a Pactor modem. So this Pactor modem can be used to do HF uh, packet. I can do Vara uh, HF, <clears throat> and I use this Pactor modem. And what's interesting about the Pactor modem is I can also set up a forwarding station to where if I go into a disaster area where there is no uh, repeaters or things that are set up to be able to communicate, I can set up a station myself to where people can uh, send information to my station to be relayed, relayed out to other uh, stations. So it's a pretty good, uh, pretty good uh, device to have in emergency communication. I can set up at a shelter and send uh, information back and forth to the shelters and, and things like that. So that, that's pretty valuable piece of equipment and it's interfaced with the radio and the radio has a built-in sound card so that I could do uh, the pack tour. The top right hand side is a power supply uh, that I use it if, if I've got commercial power available or generator power. And then the bottom right hand is the UHF VHF with the uh, TNC sitting on top of it. So with that TNC I can also uh, do packet. This is the back end of it. So I've got my antenna ports. I've got coax coming from each radio into this uh, plate here. So then I can just come and plug an external antenna right to it. Everything's already done in the box. I just need the external antenna. Right below that is called a gateway. Or a power gate, I'm sorry. It's called a power gate. <laughs> And that's a pretty interesting piece of equipment as well because if I'm running commercial power and running the generator or the uh, power supply, or if I'm running off a generator running the power supply, at the time that I'm running that power supply, it is also charging my batteries. And then uh, vice versa, if I don't have commercial power, it automatically switches to the battery power. So that's a pretty good technology, and uh, and it works very well, <laughs> especially if uh, you're running a commercial power, then you know at the same time it's charging your batteries. <clears throat> so the main purpose of that piece of equipment is if for some reason you lose commercial power, it automatically switches to battery power. So that's uh, really, really handy. <clears throat> and then I've got a rig runner beside it to where I can plug in all my additional equipment uh, into that rig runner and it's all tied into the battery circuit or the or the power su supply circuit and to the bottom right hand side i've got a big anderson power pole plug which is going down to a battery box that i show in here sitting at the bottom of it in that battery box i've got two 35 amp hour batteries uh, that i can run off of uh, with this setup this is a a view of the battery box. There's a top view of it. So in there I've also got a, uh, it's not a rig runner, but it's made like a rig runner where you can pull, plug in additional radio equipment into that little box down there and and uh, run it off straight off the battery. Uh, that's, that's a pretty handy uh, also. Everything that we do in ham radio is 12 volts, so you have to have some way to uh, take a power supply that will put out 13 volts or some batteries 
we can't uh, technically plug it into a 110 volts it wouldn't last very long <clears throat> and I've got an additional 2 meter 70 centimeter voice or packet go box and this is it basically uh, this box came from Harbor Freight it's a it's kind of like a pelican box but does not cost near as much as a pelican box and on the left hand side of this I have a another power supply and then between the radio and power supplies is a 12 amp hour battery as well and then I have again the 271 in this box with the Cantronics 3 plus to where I can do packet out of this box I can't do HF but I can do UHF and VHF packet here's a little bit closer view I have that uh, distribution block in there too where I can plug in additional actually it doesn't look like I got just one port left where I could plug in something else I also have the uh, power gate over on the left hand side so this basically does the same thing as the bigger box if I'm running the power supply I'm charging my battery and, and if I'm running the battery it switches over to battery power if I lose commercial power it automatically switch to that battery power so that's a really a really good helpful or piece of equipment to have especially uh, doing something portable here's a picture of the bo go boxes all closed up ready to go out the door uh, in my shack I keep battery chargers they're called onboard chargers like you would put on a fishing boat to keep all your batteries topped and fully charged so when I walk out of the door of my shack to go on a call or go to an event, everything is fully charged, 100% ready to go. And one of the things I did not take a picture of is on the other side of these boxes is a bulkhead fitting with a cap on it. So all I have to do is take that cap off and I've got a 259 connection where I can just plug in coax on the back side of, that, of these boxes. Well, actually, the other box has them, but the smaller one has a bulkhead where you can plug in an external antenna. And you don't have to mess around with trying to plug in coax on the back of your radio and, and get all that hooked up. It's all ready. All you have to do is uh, plug in an external antenna. <coughs> Works well. Uh, I guess there will be questions at the end of the, of the presentation. But here's my contact uh, information. I'll let it sit there for a few minutes. If you want to uh, email me and ask me a specific question or need some help with trying to set up a go box or whatever, uh, I would be available and be uh, uh, happy to assist you. <coughs> so, uh, do you have the uh, Aaron? Do you have uh, something you want to share with this presentation? <laughs> at this time? <laughs> yeah, thanks, Robert. Yeah, it's I'm itching to give away the next door prize here. So <laughs> let's go ahead and, and, and get the form opened up. And let me put the, the, the keywords uh, up on the screen in just a second. So folks that are joining in, door prizes here during virtual uh, Mentor Fest. The link to enter is in the description just below the YouTube video there. You can also find it on the section webpage, ARRLNTX.org. Just click on the Mentor Fest uh, item at the top of the screen to, to find your way to the entry form. Uh, 10 minutes it'll be open and as you're entering it we need you to put this keyword in there MCOM uh, to show that you're here at the session and so uh, go ahead and, and enter. Uh, we'll have that open for the next uh, 10 minutes and at the end of the session we'll uh, select and announce uh, the winner. So thanks uh, Robert. Back over to you. Uh, thank you, Aaron. I almost forgot your name there for a second. <laughs> it's all right. No worries. You're good. <laughs> all right. Thank you. So the next part of this uh, presentation is going to be a trailer. I, I'm a welder, and uh, actually a ham gave me an old boat trailer, and I converted this trailer into a radio trailer. There's a couple of options. You can build just an antenna trailer where you can go extend an antenna in the air but uh, I built one to where I could get in if the weather's bad or raining and uh, still also uh, extend an antenna in the air. <laughs> so talk a little bit about the fabrication, the solar power. I have solar power that's available, uh, battery power, generator, or commercial power, emergency communication equipment and antenna hookup and use will be basically the topics I try to cover on this next section. 
<clears throat> so here's a picture of the trailer in the front of it. I have a window unit, so uh, over to the bottom right you see a 110 outlet, so I can plug in either a generator or I can plug in ex uh, commercial power, which I have plugged in in this picture. Uh, I use the onboard charger in this trailer as well, and, and all four batteries that I have in there are fully charged when I hook onto this trailer and go, <clears throat> so that works out well. In that black box, I have different variations of wire antennas and uh, ham radio stuff. I got some uh, collapsible cones and caution tape and, and that sort of thing that I keep in that uh, black box. On top of this trailer, I have 200 watt solar panels. Uh, and if I go out on a public service event like the Dallas Marathon or somewhere, uh, my batteries stay fully charged the entire event uh, running these 100 watt solar panels. Uh, I've got it currently plugged in because I'm underneath a big tree and kind of prevents the charge uh, method with the solar panels. So I have a switch in there where I can select uh, change it from solar power to commercial power and uh, so currently it's plugged in Here's two of the batteries I have in the trailer uh, They all four batteries weigh about 107 pounds a piece two of them are 146 amp hour and two of them are 115 amp hour So I have quite a bit of capacitance in this trailer as far as batteries. There's the other two and these actually uh, at one time were computer backup batteries. Uh, there's a place over in Garland where the guy, when they rotate them, they can't, they got to rotate them. And uh, he gets access to them and then sells them for a lot less than what they would originally cost if you were to buy this size battery brand new. So that works out pretty good for him also. This is one of the onboard chargers I was talking about. This thing will charge your batteries and then it'll float. It'll keep your batteries charged, topped off, and not overcharge them. Uh, so that's came in real handy. Uh, I got it here. I've got it in my shack. I also got some on my boat. So they work very well, and I, and I thought it was a pretty good idea. So I don't have to physically put a charger on them periodically to make sure that they're fully charged. It's pretty important in ham radios that your batteries are fully charged. <coughs> And there's a better picture of that external plug. On the inside of that tra this trailer, it has four a four-way outlet, so I can plug in a power supply inside. It's mainly what I use the 110 for is running the power supply in there, and uh, and it works well. Of course, the window unit is 110. Uh, all the lights I have in the trailer are all 12 volt, uh, so. Uh, get having access to uh, 110 is definitely important also in ham radio This is a side view uh, There's another external box that I put on there that has also uh, Quite a bit of uh, uh, stuff pertaining to ham radio. I got a couple of uh, JPOs in there <coughs> That I could set up in addition to the other uh, antenna setups that I've got <coughs> So, I remind you, I said it, but this was a boat trailer at one time, and I bought the steel. It's a steel box trailer. I bought the steel, and it took me a while, but, and the windows are actually f come for horse trailers. So, I bought a couple of windows and put them in there, and <coughs> I built this trailer. Only regret I have is that it's a four by eight. Uh, probably would have been better to build my own frame and made it five by ten and have a little bit more room in there, but. It's a pretty good size for two operators. Two operators could set in there uh, fairly easy. <clears throat> now this is my uh, bulkhead ports. Everything inside this trailer is just like the gold boxes. It's already got the coax ran. <clears throat> Everything's set up, ready to go. All I have to do is plug in an external antenna in this box. <clears throat> and uh, on this particular box, it's all UHF and VHF. And then over to the left, you can see the pulley or the uh, the winch, manual winch. So I built this uh, fixture where I can put a 40-foot uh, Ron push-up pole, or I can put the fiberglass push-up pole into this fixture and then crank it straight up to where I'm 
uh, any 20 to 40 feet up off the ground with an antenna. So that, that fixture works out very well. And I could do UHF, VHF, or HF. So on the right side, that box is for HF only. That's all hooked up to the uh, ICOM 7000 that I have inside the trailer. So I can do both UHF, VHF, HF, and I can also do packet or pack tour out of this trailer. <laughs> this is a picture of uh, the Ron 40 push-up pole that's mounted on top of the trailer. Uh, I've got a pulley, so this is a good picture of one of my pulleys so that I can pull up a wire antenna of the MCOM and either in this case it'd probably be a sloper instead of an MVIS so I think it's smart on any any kind of push-up pole to pull a pulley so you, you can do uh, other modes other than UHF or VHF here's a picture of the inside uh, my window unit and on the left hand side is where all the radio equipment is uh, I've got a heater down there at the bottom, uh, one of them Mr. Heaters, which comes in handy uh, like the Dallas Marathon is in December, so it's, usually it's uh, pretty cool uh, temperature-wise. <clears throat> so there's my power supply. There's another one in power gates. Uh, this works the same way as the go boxes. If I lose commercial power, it automatically switches to battery power. If I'm uh, running the power supply, it's automatically charging uh, the battery. So that's a, a nice tool. I have this, the 710G Kenwood with a built-in TNC in here as well. And if you can see the uh, USB cable kind of hanging over the power gate, I can plug that into my laptop and do packet radio uh, out of my trailer. If I do pack tour, which is HF, I'd have to have my go box set up inside this trailer right? <clears throat> in order to do pack tour because it's got the modem in the box i don't have a modem in this trailer and this is a picture of my uh icom 7000 it's just got the head up there by the meter the actually actual bulk of the radio is right down to the left mounted to that shelf so i have hf capabilities uh, out of this trailer as well <clears throat> All right, miscellaneous equipment. Uh, I got some other stuff I wanted to share. Uh, they got all kinds of solar panels out there, and uh, for you hams that don't have one, it's a good piece of equipment. Uh, this is actually a 100-watt fold-up solar panel, uh, and, and it folds up, and it's got some legs to where you can tilt it at an angle toward the sun or lay it flat, uh, wh wherever you can get it towards facing the sun. And uh, I've had really, really good experience with these solar panels uh, keeping my batteries up and uh, keeping them charged. Uh, they work very well. This is a 60-watt uh, solar panel. Uh, it's a little bit more portable and easier to handle. Uh, get it on Amazon. I, I can't remember exactly what I paid for it. Uh, I think it was under $100, but it's 60 watts, and it does very well as also uh, keeping all your battery batteries charged and uh, keeping you portable. I would uh, suggest that for any ham uh, to use as portable equipment. Now I'm going to show you some uh, public services that I've been involved in. Uh, actually, we're going to get to do the marathon this year. I think it's December the 12th or 15th. Uh, we're going to get to do the Dallas Marathon. We, we haven't done it since 2019 because of the COVID. Uh, and of course, there's going to be some pretty uh, ground, strict ground rules, uh, a social distancing, mask, etc. But we're going to at least get to do it uh, finally. So this is a picture of Field Day. Uh, I belong to the GARCC Garland Radio Amateur uh, Communications uh, Club. Uh, we're in downtown Garland on Austin Street. And we normally have our field day at Winters Park in Garland. Uh, of course, we haven't had it because uh, of the COVID, but this is me with, with it set up with my trailer. The gentleman standing there is W5IDN. He's a, a great ham, a great guy. He's been doing ham radio. He probably was doing ham radio before I was born, but he's a really good guy. There's a lot of good hams that are out there that can really help people and be uh mentors and uh, give you a lot of information these two kids 
their dad was actually there, so they got on my two meter and uh, made contacts with their dad. He had a little handy talkie. Uh, you know, he was away from right there, and and uh, they they were just excited to uh, make contacts with uh, somebody on the radio. So I'm usually the go to trailer when uh, we do field day, so uh, anybody can come up and participate or or get a little bit involved and learn a little bit about it. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, I believe uh, this was actually at one of the mentor fest. Uh, we've been having them at the Shriners in Rowlett, and uh, I participated in a couple of them. We had one that was in Irving uh, that I took all my stuff out there and set it up for uh, display and a answering questions and that sort of thing. So this is where I was set up. <laughs> Here's another picture of it. Uh, Don is in this picture, M5 DMR. Uh, he also has a portable trailer, which catches a little bit of it to the left. He's got a uh, chameleon uh, antenna set up out there in the background in the field, and it's a horizontal for HF. <clears throat> and, of course, I got the UHF and VHF set up in the back of the truck. I have a screwdriver set up on top of the trailer to do uh, HF. There's a picture of the solar panels uh, at work. And my little uh, two meter, 70 centimeter uh, gold box is sitting there on that little table uh, running. Here's a set that me and Don did. Uh, well, it was a, uh, a Mars setting. So it was a, a set. Uh, and uh, that's my trailer and his trailer set up with all the antennas. He's got the... Uh, military pole set up on the side of his trailer and of course I've got the uh, screwdriver set up he, He's in this picture. He's back there in the background working on setting up an antenna along that fence line uh, This is kind of what it looks like when you get everything out of the trailer and try to get set up uh, You got quite a bit of stuff that's out uh, around the trailer Here's an antenna that he set up uh, in VIS. Uh, I believe that this was the MCOM too, if I remember correctly, and it's set up on military poles. And he's got them uh, Velcroed around the post of the fence and got that set up. Another picture of the trailers, and there's a generator. <clears throat> I've got a generator too, but was not using it. But there's a generator where we can have some uh, a generator power to run power supplies and et cetera. More pictures of the trailers set up. And this is one of the events that I participated in. It's called the MS-150. Uh, we're having it this year uh, as well as the marathon. And it's going to be May the 15th. And usually this is a two-day event. And uh, this year it's going to be a one-day event. And, of course, there's going to be a COVID-19 uh, set up for... Uh, social distancing and, and stuff that's required uh, for that uh, mandate. So here's a picture of uh, bicycle riders. These guys usually in the MS-150 will ride a, our last time I was there they rode bicycles for 160 miles. So it's a two-day event for that long of a event and they've got radio operators like myself set up at water stops. So we participate in, in the water stops. If the water stop needs uh, ice or some kind of beverages or pickle juice or whatever for the riders and they run out, so then we get on the radio and call that uh, water stop 7 needs more ice or, or whatever their needs are. So it's a lot of fun to participate uh, in them water stops. Usually that's what I try to do because of having the portable trailer and everything. It's a... Uh, a lot easier for me just to go set up stationary. Here's another view of the water stop. Uh, lots to be said for all the volunteers that participate in these events, uh, usually church organizations and people like that will come up and set up water stations for them. Uh, ever so many miles they can pull into a water stop and get refreshment and get rehydrated before they take off on the on the course. So it's uh, a lot, lot goes to the volunteering uh, in these public events. A lot of people volunteer, and it's it's pretty cool. <laughs> this is me set up at one of the Dallas marathons. Uh, I'm right there off of Buckner Boulevard uh, and Garland Road behind that big hospital, 
uh, which also is a low area so being able to get my antenna up in the air makes a lot of difference uh, I didn't have any problems uh, communicating with the net control uh, on this event there's a different uh, view one of the things that we suggest in public service that you wear uh, earpiece or headphones it seems like every time I set up at a water stop the guy who wants to play the music sets up right beside me so if you're trying to listen to a, an external speaker on your radio it's pretty difficult so they suggest wearing uh, earphones or headphones or some way where you can hear if you're called out or if you have to make a call you can hear what's going on <clears throat> I think it's funny how they always set the the loud music right up beside me here's a picture of me with my trailer uh, I'm showing also that I've got the fiberglass antenna set up on the trailer the uh, uh, Ron 40 is still strapped to the top of it I just decided to, to set the fiberglass one up and get the uh, antenna up in the air <coughs> so that is the uh, extent of my presentation I appreciate uh, having the opportunity to share this information and uh, it's all I'm always excited about trying to help new hams a lot of people helped me out uh, in the beginning uh, saved me a lot of money telling me what to get and what not to get and uh, hams are always willing to be of service to other people and uh, try to help other hams uh, get involved so Aaron uh, that's basically the end of my presentation well, Robert, thank you much, um, N5RAG with Portable MCOM. And uh, if anybody has questions, please put them in the chat. We, we did have one question that I want to make sure we, we get because uh, uh, you showed us about oh, $20,000 worth of portable gear. And so yeah. for, someone, <laughs> for someone that's just getting started and they need to, to get a good you know, first round um, you know, set of equipment that they can take, uh, what are some good must-haves to get? Well, definitely antenna setup because antennas are probably the most important. If you've got a good radio but not a very good antenna, it's going to to uh, cause problems. There's all kinds of. Uh, I showed you two uh, Kenwood 710s, but at the moment uh, they're not available because they've got some problems with the a chip that goes in them. Something happened to the uh, the vendor in, in a, it was either Japan or China where they had a fire, so you can't get that radio. But there's a lot of radios available, and I think you would really would be better off to get a, a dual band and get a, at least a 50 watt radio, because a lot of times the five watt handhelds uh, won't make the trip, or there's a lot of noise. So a good mobile radio would be a good dual band, Kenwood or Icom or uh, well, Kenwood and Icom or Yezu are, are name brands, but and they're not real cheap, but uh, it's kind of the old saying, you get what you pay for, and they work well. Yep, here you there. All right, any other questions in the chat? Um, otherwise, that was a lot of good information on, on portable MCOM, and you know, I've been out to things, and, and, and yep, the DJ or announcer always seems to set up right <laughs> there yep, <laughs> so, every time. yeah well there's a bunch of, of, of antennas and things so i'll just go here <laughs> so, yeah all righty <laughs> no other no other questions that uh all right thank you much uh robert appreciate your time